I will talk about vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication today. Um, um, why I'm talking about to, about vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication is um, things because I'm um, working for around about four years about and on these topics um, for Volkswagen, um, and yeah, I think I have some knowledge about this. So um, when I will start, um, I will talk about this, and I think I have to give you a short motivation on this. Um, after this, I will introduce some basic concepts that is just really important to understand for the standards. Um, then I will go through some standards. Um, afterwards, yeah, some security stuff. Um, in the end, I will talk about what's the challenges actually and what we want to do in the future. Um, okay, let's start with the motivation. Um, the, the really basic motivation of um, vehicle to vehicle communication is that we want to avoid any crashes, any accidents, um, and this is becoming harder and harder for the automotive industry because we um, got a lot, uh, we, yeah, sorry. Um, um, we solved a lot of problems in the last years, and the problem is that there are some events we cannot predict, or even it is hard to detect with some sensors. So, um, when you have an emergency vehicle is driving around with its um, signals on and such things, that's, we have some really we have, we have accidents which are really not nice actually, um, and with the normal sensor, it is really hard to detect these um, emergency vehicles because they um, behave in a strange way. They don't um, follow some rules which you have in the normal um, traffic things. Um, this is similar to other things like a, red, a light validation, uh, uh, a violation that is also really hard to detect um, for a normal vehicle. So, and we think we can solve this problem with uh, communication between cars. Um, yeah. Um, you may heard about this technology already, and um, we, all these kind of hazards have um, one, some things in common. Um, one thing is that they are really um, local, so we don't have some influences in kilometer away. So it's really a local um, hazard, and um, so we have uh, short distances we have we need to overcome with this um, communication, um, and this is between vehicles. But we can also um, communicate between vehicles and infrastructure like uh, roadside units. Um, this is really important with um, signal lights and such things, but I will not really talk much about um, infrastructure here. Um, we also think, when you think about these use cases and um, accidents, you need to be really fast. At least we want to, fast, want to be faster than um, human in its reaction. So um, we think we need some communication latencies under 10 milliseconds. That is it's, yeah, it's a guess, actually. Uh, no, not, not actually, but this was a guess at the beginning. Um, we also have the problem um, that we cannot predict um, who is really interested in these information, since the uh, traffic is constantly moving, um, and so the relevance of this hazard can change for every car in some minutes, seconds. It depends on the hazard itself. Um, and um, we got in, the, in 2008, I think, uh, we got a um, we got a who own a frequency band to, for communication in this. So that's that's more or less what we want to achieve um, with these communications. So um, then, yeah, um, I would. Before I can go to the standards, I have to introduce some basic concepts. This is really important to understand this. Um, this makes it really easy or easier. So um, imagine you have a um, use case it's like in the front of, the, um, of this image. Um, you have an emergency brake. Um, 
when this blue car is uh, braking really hard, so then the white car cannot see this emergency brake. And the emergency brake is for this white car in, um, important things. Um, when this truck is braking um, and the distance between the cars is too low, then um, you have a crash. Um, the problem on this use case is that the white car cannot see this blue car. Um, and that's, is therefore the, the, the whole event has some, um, how to say, it depends on each car in this line. So if the, the driver of the truck um, reacts too late, then even the white car has some problem in the end. So you get the multi-vehicle crash, and that's not a nice um, thing. Um, when you have, when you use communication for this, we believe that we can shorten this reaction time a lot because we can uncouple these events. The, um, when the blue car is braking and you can send out a message to, to the white car, you can um, increase the reaction of the white car. That's the simple idea behind this. Um, um, this is also working for another use case. This is uh, called the broken down vehicle. Um, there we have, it's similar to, um, to the other things. You have an event in the, in the front of the broken, down, uh, the broken down vehicle and you want to inform all um, following cars about this. Um, that's the simple idea behind this. But you have to think about, m a little bit more about this, how to communicate this information. So, the, um, the simple solution to it is um, when this blue car, for example, breaks, then he can detect this emergency break and send out a message so the white car can react. That's straightforward. Um, and this kind of communication we call um, event-based communication. But there's another approach for it. Things, um, you can change the detection position. So um, when, when you send out with the blue car only status information of the car, for example, how far, uh, fast it is, um, how is the acceleration, is the braking um, activated, um, and such things, um, then and you um, send it out in a frequent manner, then you can detect these um, events in the receiving car. Um, Let's change a little bit uh, the, the rules, but we will see later um, what it will um, which influence it will have. Um, but what no, no, but um, both, both approaches have similar, uh, have some advantages and disadvantages. One disadvantage we can see, oh, um, one disadvantage of the um, awareness-based communication. Oh, I forget this. Um, the, this uh, sending out this status information is, an, we call it awareness-based communication. Um, and this awareness-based communication has some problems. Um, you can detect that there's maybe a car in front of you and it's standing still somewhere, but you don't know why. Um, it's a car defect or is there an... Um, traffic jam or something else, you can't not. For safety um, considerations, this is fine, because you know there is something and you can reduce the speed and it's really fine, but maybe you have a different strategy for a different kind of um, events. Um, for example, when there's a broken down vehicle, yeah, okay, you can pass simply, but if this is this vehicle in a traffic jam, you may think, oh no, I will leave this highway. So mm, that's a little bit, Disadvantage, but um, there's several disadvantages or advantages for each type. Um, and when you have this event-based communication, you have um, simply a message which describes this event. Um, that's but this event-based communication has a status message about the vehicle. And um, the problem on this event-based is that you have a complex interpretation of these. Who will mess, uh, of these messages thinks this is only an indication what may be happened there. But in this uh, event-based communication, you can have this event described and the interpretation is easy, okay. Um, and on the, uh, there's also 
the, the advantage on the event-based communication that you only need one message to receive. Um, for these other, for these event-based communication, you may need a lot of messages before you see what's happening, what is going on. Um, but this event-based communication had the problem that you have to precast, uh, you have to know which use cases you need uh, or you want to cover with this technology. So when, um, um, so when you have a use case which you cannot um, anticipate for the future, then you have the problem that you can't talk about it and you can't um, detect this in the end. Um, that will be a problem when you have a car for eight years, ten years in the field, then you can, eight years, ten years, this car cannot detect this use case or this event. So this is a small problem with this. But when you have this um, awareness-based communication, then you never talk about use cases in the, before, in the beginning, and you may uh, develop some use cases afterwards with this data. This, this is possible, but that's, uh, yeah. So, okay. Um, these basic concepts um, will be um, really important for these standards. So, um, the problem with these standards is uh, we have not one. That's uh, almost the same. So, um, we have, yeah, three standards yet. Um, this is one in the US, one in the Europe. Um, we have one in Japan. Um, then we have a lot of activities to uh, vehicle to vehicle communication. This is in China. And on this slide, I forget one country more. Um, even in South Korea, there's uh, some activity um, regarding this technology. Um, yeah, um, I will in this talk only talk about the US and Europe, um, since that's more or less this what I do um, at work. Um, what's to, important to know about this is that um, in Europe we have the car-to-car -car communication consortium which is um, standardization and um, does a lot of this and in the US it's CAMP, that's mostly OEMs and some other um, interested uh, stakeholders. So, but the US uh, standards is focused on awareness-based communication, whereas the Europe's is focused on event-based communication. You will see this in the standard um, in the next. So um, here's one small slide to see who is involved in the development of these um, standards in Europe. Um, it's mainly the OEMs, then you have some suppliers, um, road authorities, um, research institutions, and such things. Um, okay, um, I told you that um, in Europe we have these uh, event-based communication and we have one, the main message is we use these decentralized um, environmental notification message. Um, that's is describing an event that is in position and an event code is on it and some extra um, additional data for, for some special use cases. It's more or less um, what's in there. Um, the US has a um, message that's called this basic safety message and this is of course awareness-based message. And it, yeah, I told you already, this contains some um, status information of, about the week. But um, when you work on this topic, um, you, will have, you will have the advantages of both. So um, even in, the in, the, in Europe, we have a message that's co uh, called cooperative awareness message. Of course, it's an awareness-based message. It's really similar to the um, basic safety message. Um, and yeah. The US, they have a flag field in this um, basic safety message, which is also more um, an event-based communication. So um, after some development, they, we mixed up these um, advantages um, of both approaches, but you will see later that it's a little bit different. Um, I will not talk more about this context or, uh, content of these uh, messages, but um, you can see on the left and on the right um, in which standard they um, are defined and then you can have a closer look to it. 
Um, unfortunately, I think the SAA, SAA standards are not public, or you have to buy them. But these Etsy standards, you should um, you should download it from the internet. It should be possible. Um, um, okay. So um, when we have defined this payload, what we we know, what we what use cases we want to cover. Um, we have the problem that we have a, not only these two messages or three messages, we have a lot of different messages. So we need some kind of message multiplexing. Um, and um, for example, in other messages, bed and map, this is uh, signal phase and timing. This is something related to um, um, traffic lights and such things. Um, okay. In, the U in Europe, we have some yeah, a basic transport protocol, which has an own header that is similar to UDP, but has no length indicator field or something like this, but has a source uh, port and a destination port. And um, what's also different to uh, the UDP is that the allocation or the mapping from the port to the application is not done dynamically like a normal computer, but it's uh, defined in the standard. Um, that's all. Um, in the US, we have not such a um, protocol between it, but um, there's an implicit convention. Um, this is that you have one element in the beginning of this um, payload, and this is an enumeration, and you have a switch between the messages. Um, okay. Um, the problem now is you don't know who to inform you about some traffic events. So at least you have to think about how to route these messages and who could be interested in these messages. Um, therefore, and for awareness-based communication, um, the really simple solution and which we use is that we simply broadcast this information. Um, so since we don't know which use cases may be happen actually, we use this broadcast approach. Um, we call it single hop broadcast things. We don't intend to forward these messages for the, um, that's simply all. But when you have um, the, an event-based communication, then um, you know which maybe who could be interested in it. And for example, for this broken down, we, uh, down vehicle, we have this, the, we know that all um, following cars may be um, interested in this information, but all these cars which has already passed, it, they have, have not um, any advantage with this information. So um, you can define a special area maybe and um, send out a message which can be read uh, or forwarded in this um, area so that we can inform all these p um, cars which are in this area you can define. Um, yeah, that's so the, yeah, that's the two important um, routing mechanisms we are using. Um, and in, the, in Europe, we um, have the um, protocol, it's, geo net, it's called geo-networking. Um, this supports some, um, these two um, uh, routing algorithms, but there are some more routing algorithms which is not so important. Um, but what you see is that this geo-networking protocol has three headers. Um, the basic header and the common header have some normal, nah, not normal, but have some um, controlling information about this protocol. And the extended header has some additional data for these protocols, uh, for the algorithms we use to, um, yeah, to broadcast this information. Um, um, the separation of the basic header and the common header, I will um, talk about this later. Um, for the for the US, um, they have only one header at this, and its header is really simple. Um, since they was more focused on the awareness-based uh, communication, they don't need these uh, additional um, algorithms, so this um, header is simply a um, yeah, broadcast protocol, and it's really easy. Um, as I already said, these, um, the title of the talk said that is 
based on 802.11p, um, their booth standards are based on this. So um, 802.11 requires a header that is called uh, log logical link uh, control and uh, um, sub-network access protocol. Um, this is simply also in um, message multiplexing, um, yeah, and each kind of message has a fixed identifier, and you see these ether types uh, at, at the top. Um, the P extension of 802.11 is one flag. Um, this is this dot eleven OCB um, activated. Um, um, that means outside the context of BSS, of a basic service set. Um, this simply disables all things um, which has to do with an access point. So you have no access point discovery, you have no authentication, no association, no, uh, simply all things which is um, with the basic access point um, things. And there are some other things we don't need in this. So at least the, we use 802.11 only for broadcast um, at this point. Um, yeah, I think this is, um, almost all about these headers, um, but I want to say something about these frequencies we are using actually. This is um, the frequency band we use, and um, this is not fixed to any technology. So um, actually you can use any technology in these bands, but they have to be related to ITS um, things. So. Um, and uh, the US and the European is a little bit different in the um, transmission power you can use, but that's all. Okay, this is basically the standard, this is the concepts of the standards. Um, in the detail, there you have to look in these standards. Um, how we use security in um, vehicle to vehicle communication? Um, we have some requirements. Um, this is things we have to deal with safety related things and accidents, we want to have the possibility to authenticate the sensors a little bit. So not anyone should send any messages as a little bit um, dangerous in our um, view. Um, but we all want to protect the privacy of the drivers and we have some standard attacks we don't want to have, so we play attacks and such things. Um, but unfortunately, I don't know so much at the US, um, of the US standard to this, so um, I will only talk of the UA, um, Euro European standard. Um, yeah. Um, the problem now is that we have to think about security in the case that we, um, we want, we want to, have some security, in, uh, we want, don't want to change messages from anyone. So um, the problem is now that we have to put some signature at the end of the, um, in the security payload, but when you use it, um, um, sorry, um, we, we cannot use um, IES or something like this because um, we have to use one shared secret and shared secret about sharing between um, several million cars maybe, it's not a secret. Um, so we have to use, um, um, sorry, I forgot the name. Um, we have to use uh, something like, um, uh, sorry. Um, we have to use uh, things like IES or things like um, elliptic curves or something like this, but um, the problem there is you have a private, and an, um, a private key and a public key, and this is coupled together. When you have one private key, key there's, or we have, when you read an identifier with an, um, um, a public key, or you can decrypt it with a public key, then you have the problem that there's only one private key to it. And then this is an identifier that's unique. Um, so 
privacy is a problem with this approach, but therefore we have a pseudonym certificate and long-term certificates in each cast. Um, to understand how it works, um, we have to look on the uh, public key infrastructure. Um, each car is provided with a long-term certificate, um, and this long-term CA um, is direct on the, you, you get this um, certificate at the production time for each car. So each car has its own uh, long-term certificate. Um, things, um, we want to have this technology to, to work uh, uh, with different um, manufactured, uh, uh, with cars from different manufacturers. Um, we need a root here somehow because each uh, manufacturer will have its own long-term certificate, uh, certificate authority. Um, and we have also a future a feature um, that is called cross-certification things. We need different root CRs because every country in Europe maybe will have its own root CRs. So that's a political um, decision. Um, but you are not allowed to use these um, long-term certificate for communication with other cars. Um, for the communication with other cars, you use these um, cert um, pseudonym certificates, and one feature about this is that the car can change this certificate as it wants. So, um, and you use this long-term certificate only for authentication, authentication for the pseudonym certificate uh, authority. Um, this, of course, knows about the root CR, so that you don't know, you don't have to um, know about these long-term certificates, CRs, uh, certifi auto sorry, uh, long-term certificate authorities. So, um, and you can get a lot of um, pseudonym certificates. Um, therefore, you have some kind of uh, privacy because you have a lot of pseudonyms. Um, yeah. How many certificates you have? Um, the thing is, you have more than 20 certificates in parallel for more uh, for around about one week, um, and you have some rules when you have to change these certificates. Um, that's that the engine st um, start, and you have to um, change these certificates every 10 to 30 minutes. But um, all these things are actually under discussion. Um, that's not standardized yet, and it will be standardized in the basic standard profile of the car-to-car -car communication consortium for the European. Um, yeah, maybe um, it's not fixed, actually. Um, okay, but what means a pseudonym change? Um, as you see on the right is that we have the security is in, not a vertical layer in our stack, it's a horizontal layer because you have to change every identifier you have. It also includes the MAC address you use, actually. Um, that also means you have any um, um, identifier in the um, applications and such and things. So I would personally say that um, I, the, the security should be um, like this in the um, stack image. Um, but we have another problem with pseudo-identifiers. Um, when you think about um, communication, awareness-based communication here, we have something, we need the vehicle dimensions to, dimensions to work with this. So, um, and the vehicle dimension, uh, dim um, it's a small problem. When you have a Golf from Volkswagen or a normal BMW, uh, BMW or something like this, that's all okay. But when you drive a Lamborghini, that's a really unique uh, vehicle dynamic. It's really uh, low, but it's wide and long, so that's more or less unique. When you drive around with a Lamborghini, then you have the problem that these is also an identifier things you are alone on the um, on the street, all the other um, cars around you will not look, look like a Lamborghini. Um, so therefore, we have um, we reduce the accuracy, uh, uh, we reduce the yeah, accuracy of these um, um, values. So that's on 10 cent, um, 
10 centimeters. Uh, um, yeah. Um, but you have to care about these things. Um, okay. Um, the long term certificates are valid for several years, um, but they have an it's at one point, you have to exchange these long-term certificates. That's even the same with um, the roots certificates. But as you see already, we use elliptic curves for it, and um, these standards are, we talk a lot, uh, a long time about the standards, and we actually use the NIST curves, the curves um, in the standards, but um, yeah, there's a discussion with the Bundesamt für Sicherheit in der Informationstechnik of Germany, um, and they want uh, to change this a little bit. Um, and one change is that the, they want to have the brain pool curves. Um, for us, it doesn't matter. We need um, an ECDSA um, 256 curve, since our hardware um, acceleration actually works only with these curves, um, but it's not. Um, on the curve, we don't depend on the curve. Um, and um, actually, we use these um, elliptic curves for every certificate in the standards, and um, they want to change it also. But uh, yeah, that will be also changed. Things we only need it for the communication between cars. Um, um, one thing about this hardware acceleration is um, this is really important for us. Things we we, yeah, we anticipate that we have, in the worst case, around about 700 to 800 messages per second, and then you get a um, problem with uh, validation of these certificates. So we need a really hardware acceleration at this point. Um, but this is worst case uh, calculation, so um, in the beginning, we will not have this problem. Um, okay, what else? Um, yeah. We need to think about more things. Um, at, at the moment, we have a communication and we can exchange data, but the problem is the interpretation of this data. Um, we have to define really strange things or things we, you don't expect at the beginning. Um, when you have a position which you share with all the cars around, um, you, as an advanced driver's assistance system, developer, you have the problem, where's the reference position? Um, is it in the center of the car? Is it on the front uh, buffer, uh, uh, bumper? Or is it on the uh, rear buff bumper, this reference position? Because that means maybe up to two meters different. That's, um, it's ab about such things you have to talk with all the other uh, um, OEMs. And so we will Sanitize this in the standard profile, and the triggering conditions is about when you should send out a dinner message to indicate that there's an event somewhere. This is also not, uh, not so easy to define. Um, in the uh, United States, we will have uh, minimum, uh, minimum performance, requ performance requirements. Um, yeah. Um, and then there are some challenges also, things um, when we talk about safety, you want to know how the system um, works at the um, boundaries, on the system boundaries. So what happens when the um, channel is full, when you can't send any more um, messages? Or what happens, or how far is the communication range? Which um, influences the, um, the envi environmental of these cars? So what, which influences and which? on this communication technology and such things. And even we have to think about coexistence with tolling gates and um, forms, for example. Um, yeah. Um, then also, I want to introduce that uh, the Technical University in Prague is actually working on a patch for the Linux kernel to support these OCB um, mode of um, um, IEEE 802.11. Um, yeah, I hope it's not finished yet, but I hope this is becomes finished in the beginning of next year. Um, you will find this on this uh, address. Um, when you are interested in an implementation of these um, upper layers, then you can find it um, at these uh, one from on GitHub. 
Um, I think there's some more implementation, but this is actually something we also use. Um, yeah, what in the future? Um, for the future, you have to s know a little bit about uh, driver system systems. Um, when you think as an engineer about um, these driver system systems, and then you have to, you have a control loop then um, with sensors at the beginning, um, with many sensors at the beginning, um, since these data are not so easy to interpret, so we have been like a fusion to, to generate one world view for this um, car. Um, then you have an interpretation and evaluation, uh, and you, you get some plan to which you want to do, what you want to do in the traffic, and then you have need a controlling unit which controls all your actuating things, which act, um, affects the real world, and then you can again measure the new things you see. Um, the standard, or normally we refer um, uh, vehicle to vehicle communication as a sensor. Um, things you can uh, provide a lot of information to um, these uh, driver assistance systems. Um, but things um, you send out also information, it's a kind of actuating element. So vehicle to vehicle communication is not only a sensor. Um, yeah, um, and this is something, this. The right side is something we will do a lot in, in, in the future. But come back to the f uh, uh, left side first. Um, actually, we sent out with this awareness-based communication a lot of status information um, from one vehicle, but we also add some information about other vehicles. So when you see with your uh, radar or with a sensor a car, for example, this car um, behind this um, um, building, then you can send out these uh, measurements or this distance to this car, also with, uh, from the red cars, and then maybe the blue car will have some advantages to know about this car on the right side. Um, yeah, this is actually. And the second idea is that um, we can um, exchange the planned trajectories of cars. So. When you precast these, your, your plan um, for several seconds, five seconds to 10 seconds maybe, um, and you send it out, that will improve the, um, uh, yeah, the, your, your assumptions about how the environment will evolve in the, few, in the next seconds. And this is really a nice information for planning some maneuvers um, on the street. Um, and maybe in the end we also be, are able to um, cooperate with these things to um, plan uh, maneuvers with different cars together to cooperate. So that's the ideas we have in the future, but we are actually in the concept phase of this. Uh, phase of this. So yeah, um, for me I'm ready now, uh, finished now, so do you have any questions? The first two questions go to the internet. Yes, thank you. Um, instead of sending single events, why not broadcasting the standardized set of sensor data so every car can calculate what is relevant to them? This would maybe be more, more future-proof in terms of um, autonomous driving. Um, yeah, that's, that's totally right. This is more this uh, awareness-based communication which I've talked about. Um, yeah, that's something we want to do actually, but we will not send out the um, normal sensor data. We will more send out distances between cars and something like this. But yeah, this is planned actually. So, next question from the internet. Yes, thank you. How much would um, a system be affected when the root CA, um, the private key of a root CA is exposed, like it, we have seen um, from Sony, Lenovo, etc. 
Um, yeah, that's, uh, this is a problem actually um, which have to cover, but you saw already that we have um, this cost certification and when you exploit this, um, maybe you can solve this problem. Um, when you assume that you um, cross set, or you s assign this different route, say as one um, long-term certificate, then it's not so important when one route say, has not trust uh, you cannot trust one Utsuya anymore. Um, uh, then you switch to the second Utsuya. So that's maybe a, uh, that's a solution to it. Okay, next question over here. Okay, uh, I'd like to thank you for your talk. Um, I have seen that you are monitoring also other activities in this area. Um, do you, uh, first, I want to make you aware that there is um, one activity by Intel, BMW, and some British university, I can't remember, uh, which is doing something comparable, but competing, um, which is, yeah, okay. I don't want to go into too much details. Okay. I want to make aware you of this. Do you and second, um, do you think what's about availability? I know that Volkswagen is strongly behind the car to car concept, but I know that other car makers are going more to a server based communication so that cars are not really communicating to each other but via servers in uh, via back end servers. And I know some other things behind that. Um, yeah, this is right. Um, you, you have different possibilities to solve this problem. So, um, in the end, you will have some kind of vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication, um, but it's not so clear in the end how you will solve this uh, problem. So, um, you can use Wi-Fi like this, or you can use uh, backend um, related communication. Um, the problem with backends actually is that you need uh, coverage with your, um, um, yeah, you need your coverage with your mobile devices. So if you are in a tunnel or something, you don't have any more vehicle to vehicle communication. The Wi Fi based solution has um, coverage in this case. Um, and you have maybe some trouble with the latencies. Um, this will become less and less a problem, since the technology will become better, but um, yeah, there are some other issues with um, backend based communication. Okay, next question over there. Hey, um, I, got a, I got a question regarding uh, the, the concept. Um, when I buy a car, I receive a unit that is able to send out messages that are cryptographically signed or whatever. How do I how do I keep people from just using that to perform denial of service attacks on the autobahn? Denial of, it's not possible. Uh, you can't denial of services attacks. You can't uh, prevent things, um, but this is always the same. So. Um, when you want to make a DDoS attack on this technology, you can simply by disturbing the frequencies we are using. You can't prevent it. The, the trick is to detect these. So um, we need some measures to detect these uh, DDoS attacks, and then we have to um, yeah, stop the car or something like this. We, have to, we need some backup solutions for um, how to react with the car. Okay, thank you. Okay, next question over there. Hi, uh, thanks for the talk. It was really interesting overview, I guess. Um, I have a question about the, the pseudonymous certificates. Um, so I understand that this uh, takes away the, uh, the immediate danger, or tries to take away the immediate danger of exposing your uh, location profile to uh, the cars uh, in, or the, the location history to the cars in your immediate vicinity. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, you can still build a complete uh, location history for uh, some car by just collecting all the data because the root CA clearly knows what the, uh, what the what pseudonymous certificate belongs to which car. Um, so, uh, or is, are there something like blind signatures in place? Um, and, and there's another problem, I think. Um, so how do you handle certific pseudonymous certificate switch? 
Because you, if, if you're going somewhere and you keep receiving messages from certificate one, and at one point you just start receiving messages from certificate two, uh, that you know that certificate one is now certificate two. Um, yeah, um, the second one is some problem for the applications or for the uh, driver systems. Um, systems. Um, yeah, this is, you can overcome this because you know that a vehicle cannot jump. So, um, when I, mean, I mean, you can clearly tell that the, that is the same vehicle, so you lose the privacy protection of, of that pseudonymous certificate step. Or am I wrong? Uh, yeah, you cannot use anymore this um, identifier by the, um, um, by the certificate, that's right. But this um, car is not jumping around, so the car is driving a straight line. And um, when you see that there's an um, uh, um, a pseudonym is vanished, and there's a new at the same point, and going the same line, you know, oh, from the physics, oh, it should be the same car. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm, what I'm trying to say. So, so yeah. you, why even do pseudonymous certificates if you can still completely track that one uh, car? Yeah, that's, that's, that's the other question. Uh, yeah, that's the first question. I was referring to the second question, actually. And um, the first question, yeah, that's, uh, the problem now is, yes, yeah, it's possible, um, but not the Rootsia is knowing about this because the Rootsia only signs these um, certificates of the ATCA and the pseudonym CA. Um, but um, the problem is with this that other technologies are also um, um, possible to use for the same reason. So you have an ID on your license plate driving around um, all the time. So when you use a camera, it's much easier to do the same thing. Yeah, but I can change the license plate. Um, <laughs> <laughs> even when you change the license, Hmm? Yeah, yeah, yeah. by yeah. now it's kind of uh, time to remind everyone that the question is a short sentence ending with a question mark. And uh, <laughs> next question over there, please. Um, yeah, at first, thank you for your talk. And my question is, who is running the root CAs? Is it um, uh, the country or is it a company running this or is it um, an independent um, authority like the car-to-car -car communication consortium? It depends. Oh. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a political um, decision in the end. Um, I think for infrastructure in Germany, for example, it's um, running by the government or s some institute of the government, of course. Um, things they wanted to have, this is a political decision, um, but anyone can in the end, and you have to cross-sign all these uh, roots here. So that's the political decision. I can't... Uh, say much about this, actually. Okay. We will see. Yes. Okay, next two questions for the internet. No questions anymore for the internet? Okay, fine. Over there, then. Um, if you sign uh, locally um, in the car, the pseudonymous signature key material is stored on the car or generated on the car. If you think about uh, car use times or uh, that cars are in the field for 10 or 12 or 15 years, how do you guarantee that the security of those security chips is not compromised? Um, yeah, that's, that's hard. Um, but we, we will exchange these certificates and these uh, chips um, at the service, in, at the car dealer. Um, what's happened when these... Uh, yeah, algorithms are not safe anymore is that we should exchange this hardware to car dealers um, at the service. Um, yeah. Yes. Yes, some follow-up question to that. Um, so if I'm an attacker, I will not go to the service point, but just buy a car and then five or ten years later um, use that car to send fake messages. That would be my, my attack um, scenario. Yeah, then you... Um, we will work, well, we actually work on security measurement in, um, inside the car, so it's not so easy to exchange any parts and um, introduce any data on the can in the end. Um, actually, it is possible at the moment, but um, there will be some measurement against these attacks. Okay, next question over there. Okay. Um, 
uh, how do you, uh, I understand you're using some kind of private key, uh, public key uh, encryption or uh, authentication. So uh, you said also you would generate 20 uh, uh, pseudonym uh, certificates per week. Yes. How do you transfer those public keys to all the cars from the millions of cars you have on the car, on the street? Uh, oh, okay. Um, I forget to mention that the security headers I add there in, um, sorry, it's a little bit, um, uh, I will, so the security, um, you provide these certificates with every message in the worst case. So normally we have some measurement to reduce it, but um, when you send out this message, you also add the certificate at the end of the message. Okay. So I have signed my uh, own uh, uh, stuff. Uh, this, this is a third certificate. Um, sorry. Yeah. This one. Yeah. 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 Um, oh. So um, you don't sign your, uh, your pseudonym certificates. Um, you get these pseudonym certificates from the pseudonym certificate authority. Yep. But if I send out my messages and I send out the public key uh, in this, oh, sorry, as, as, uh, I send out my message and send out the public key as well, so I can't send anything. Uh, why? You have the private key is in your car. You can't sign this message. Uh, as you sign this message with the private key. It's a signature. Yeah, it's with not the private key, uh, but the public key must be known to the receiver. Yeah, you add this pu um, public key at the end of the, your message, and this is all. Um, this public key is signed by the pseudonym certificate, and you know you ha need to know the whole chain, of course, and okay. you can also sh um, send out these. You, at the end, you need to know about the root CR, uh, root certificate, in your car. Um, this is something we have to put in the car at the beginning, mm. um, and maybe to add later, but. When you know this, you can um, prove all these, uh, the whole chain. Okay. okay. Next question over there. So uh, when an attacker comes in a situation to be able to sign messages with uh, fake data, uh, is it possible to uh, DDoS other cars by sending out uh, messages that trigger emergency brakes, for example, in other cars? And can't this trigger uh, more accidents in the end? So for cars that are not involved in the system? Yeah. You you, when you have this possibility, of course, you can send out these messages and trigger some events you we wa don't want to have, but um, then we have some, some additional sensors. So we don't rely only on vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication. We also use all these other sensors, and you get in a problem that you have, you invalidate some logic in the car. So you can detect such um, things, and then you will simply don't uh, listen to these messages on anymore. Um, sorry, uh, the, when I simulate the car at all, so if I just uh, take the hardware that signs the messages and um, put it on a yeah. ECU that I totally control, um, then the messages can't be distinguished between uh, yeah. the real and fake messages? Um, yeah, it, you, you will be, um, how to, yeah, when I have a um, um, uh, driver assistance system, um, you don't rely only on vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication. That's you will not do. Uh, do. It's the same with um, a radar. You don't only rely um, on this um, radar. So you use a lot of sensors, and you have a sensor set. And when your sensor set has some logical um, things which is not logical, then you can detect it, and then you will stop the car or something like this, or you will uh, disable these um, uh, features and inform the. Um, Driver. This is the only solution to this. But you can detect it. Next question over here. Uh, can you say what is the average length of uh, CAM and DEM messages and what format and uh, what length has the uh, certificate? So will you use the WAV format from the US or an yeah. own developed Etsy format? It's, um, we have the, the own developed Etsy format. Um, the length is, that's a hard question things. Um, we can leave out some parts of the messages uh, depending on the um, sending frequency and such things. Um, so we have around about 270 in the mean 
270 in the mean, 300 bytes at the, at the mean. But um, for, for chem or for, for chem. Um, chem? For denim, it's a little bit larger, but it's really hard. It depends on your um, use case. Uh, and the uh, ratio between uh, plain text and, and security information? So certificate lengths and signatures? 50 per, uh, 50 percent, 50 percent. Okay. Security is really large at this okay. point. So that's the reason why we use uh, elliptic curves. It has uh, some smaller certificates. Next question over there. Yeah, thank you. Um, one question is, uh, is it planned that the certificates can be revoked? And if so, how does the revocation information get into the cars? Um, so can you repeat the second? How do the revocation information get into the cars? Will there be some kind of uh, uh, CRLs or OCSP services or whatever? Um, revocation is not uh, defined yet because you have to, as a, um, the thing is you don't need to bring the revocation in the car at, with this um, p um, public key infrastructure because you have to live one week um, with the problem. Things, then you need new certificates for the certain new um, certificates. So you only need the revocation at the moment at the pseudonym CRs. The problem is that when you never know um, um, which um, certificates are used, things you have no identifier, um, mm. you have to detect this. That's the more that's the problem actually. But as far as I see, um, the typical um, application of car-to-car -car communication is just cases when your sensors actually can't help anything because you don't see the car in front of the long vehicle that is just braking. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that we try to change this with these, uh, one of these future aspects. So um, when you have a car in front of you which you see, which um, action, and you can have some um, these measurements of other cars to, and you can um, validate it. So um, this leads to a situation where an attacker has to um, attack all these cars around you to make this, um, make a logical data um, validation, so that the validation of the data is somehow um, yeah, will happen right. So this is one thing we like to do about this. And um, yeah, it's, but it's still a problem. So it's the reason. Um, but we assume that you use this data for planning. And you can use this data. Um, if it's, it, the, um, how to? The emergency brake light is maybe really a problem at its point. Um, but we try to, for dri advanced driver assistance systems, we try to um, use this data for planning. And then when you see the plan is not working out, you have to need, you need a back, uh, fallback somehow. It's always about fallbacks. Yeah. OK, thank you. At least one more question over there. Um, have you thought about the following problem? I mean, you, you have a lot of cars in the world, and you have every car has a lot of these pseudonym certificates. So shouldn't, and as an attacker who wants to spoof um, messages, you just need one valid pseudonym certificate um, to do a lot of, of harm. Um, shouldn't it be relatively easy to, I don't know, spend some money on a cluster and uh, produce a lot of private keys? Um, since there are so many pseudonym certificates for so many cars, shouldn't it be maybe relatively easy to, to get just one valid pseudonym certificate to do some harm? Um, you have an, yeah, you have a validation, uh, you, you, you have a time valid, uh, a time restriction of these pseudonym certificates. So when you have this, you have it for one week at the end. Um, and yeah, you have to, live with this problem, but you have this not worldwide, we have this in Europe or in the um, US, but yeah, it's possible. Okay. So the, the certificate, uh, um, uh, the, the lifetime is Can we cut this short? Okay. Um, if the person over there can compress the question in less than 20 seconds, we may be able to do that as a last question. Yeah. 
Okay, thanks. Um, I just want to ask, uh, we see every uh, year breaking security concepts uh, on this conference, so how are you securing um, your model with now in the standard defining ECDSA uh, 256 and saying, hey, we have hardware acceleration for this, uh, with uh, seeing that Kakar is even a long-term product? Um, yeah, when this happens, you have to find solutions and you have to um, exchange the But wouldn't we change it by okay, a we're out of time. Th sorry? Th thank you all very sorry. much. We're out of time. Um,